Hey guys, what is up? Uh, today I'm bringing you another War Room video. This time, however, this isn't a completely original team. Um, you may realize, you may notice what team this is. Um, this is Keegan B's team. Um, I wish I could slide, o slide, slide over to the actual review on Nugget Bridge. But uh, last time I did that, my screen kind of froze where it was like half here and half here. So like the right hand side that you're seeing right now, Showdown, was on the left hand side and half of the page on Nugget Bridge was on the right side and it was bizarre. So basically what I did is I saw this team featured on Nugget Bridge and don't worry, the link will definitely be in the description and you should totally check out Nugget Bridge. They're great for VGC players. Uh, the forums are great. Uh, the people are great. And these reviews are really awesome for these teams and kind of go through the entire thought process behind the teams. But um, I saw this being featured. I hope I didn't just like pop outside. Um, and it had Mega Charizard Y and Rhydon. And these are two of my favorite Pokemon ever. So I was like, oh man, I got to get in on this team. So you may, may have seen me like messing around with this team in a bun in the showdown episodes uh i finally just decided to buckle down and do this team and i i made four changes which may not seem a lot but it really does drastically change well two of the changes drastically change it the other two are kind of just minor tweaks that i did <laughs> so the first minor tweak, which is the easiest thing to... Well, I mean, I guess I might as well just discuss the team in general first. Um, the link I put in, the, I will put in the description is going to be a better description of the team. Because um, it comes from the viewpoint of the creator. But basically, this team kind of center, centers around Charizard Y doing a lot of damage. Um, and everyone kind of supporting it and doing their own damage in between and as support. Um, he originally had a Salamence over where I have my Gar Gardevoir and an Aerodactyl over the Venusaur. And Aerodactyl kind of protected from the rock slides and Salamence just was just a straight attacking kind of guy, I think. But, um, so the first change I made is, um, well, before I say anything, the Ludicolo and the Rhydon are completely the same. Um, I didn't change anything about them. I felt no need to. Uh, they do their purpose very well. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is the Gorgeist. Uh, normally, it was his his set was 252 HP, 252 Special Defense. Um, you know, during one of my searches, excuse me while I fix myself. Uh, during one of my searches, um, I was kind of debating between using Trevenant and Gorgeist because um, Gorgeist may have been bulkier, but Trevenant had the Harvest and could have been a very good status absorber or straight-up stall kind of guy. So I wasn't sure, um, and I was kind of looking up you know, people's opinions on comparing the two and what their roles are, and pretty much everyone agreed that Gorgeist is the super rear. Sorry, I, I had to. Superior um, choice in terms of just kind of defending and leech seeding sort of thing. So I went for it, but Keegan's EV spread wasn't really the best. And I think he even mentions in the review that it wasn't the best and he just kind of threw it together. So through my research, I found this EV spread, which I personally think is really fantastic. Um... It gives you more bulk in defenses, which you might not think you need, because, I mean, it it does have high defenses, but at the same time, um, it gives you that survivability against, like, Talonflame, things that really do scare you. Um, this specific EV spread from the calculations I saw, um, it survives Gengar's Shadow Ball, it survives Tyranitar's Dark Pulse, it survives, I think, Mega Khan's Crunch, um, and it f survives a couple of things that you wouldn't think it should survive. So, that's great. It doesn't do enough damage to one-hit KO these guys back, but, uh, the physical guys, Will-O-Wisp, you're good. Uh, Gengar, Shadow Force, Phantom Force, you're 
kind of good. Uh, I wouldn't suggest leaving him on my Gengar, but you catch what I'm trying to say. So, that needed the change, um, in my opinion. Uh, it needed more bulk in the defenses. It needed some more attack. You could theoretically take the attack out and put it into the defense. It doesn't really need attack. It has Will of Wisp and Leech Seed to really deal damage. And Phantom Force is actually really just one of those stally things. It's not really meant for the attack. It's more meant for, I'm going to hide now. You can't hit me, but you're still gonna lose damp. You're still gonna lose health, you know. Um, and it's cool that when the other the opponent double protects, it goes through the protect anyway. So that's kind of cool. Um, so that was my minor change to Gorgeist. Now I'm gonna kind of talk about the next two changes in con conjunction. Um, the Salamence change is really nothing that's crazy. Originally his set is f nothing in HP and one, ooh, I am so sorry, excuse me, and 158 in speed, I believe. Um, the only reason I did this change is because I took the Venusaur off of Eggie's Emporium, and this was the EV spread paired. Really, I mean, basically this EV spread is aiming to stop you from being guaranteed to be one hit KO'd by Jolly Garchomp's Rock Slide. Now, in the original team, there was Aerodactyl to kind of provide the wide wide guard support of that. Um, you can't... The thing is, is you can't really do anything to Garchomp. Um, he can attack you, and you 50, 65% of the time you can survive with this EV spread, but you're not going to really do, be doing very much. Uh, Flamethrower, I believe, is quad-resisted. Solar Beam is neutral. Ancient Power is resisted. There's there's nothing you can do. Uh, you can throw HP Ice on this guy instead of Ancient Power, but it's not going to do you very much, very much good. Um, in, in all honesty, surviving those Rock Slides are, is really not your biggest priority. Um, I can do some more testing, but I personally think that if you jump, just dumped everything from defense into the speed, it'll just work better. Um, I know that sounds ridiculous, but personally, there's there's just really no need to uh, to survive those rock slides. Um, it may give you more survivability for lower, not super effective hits, but for the most part, you're outspeeding most things uh, after a while, and I don't know. That's just that's that's just how I view things. Um, VGC is really fast, and banking on a chance to survive is not really the greatest thing, especially when they ca they're pretty much faster than you, and there's that flinch chance. It's just it's so much you so much going on I mean like things like Tyrantar you're faster than them so I don't know why you're too worried um, especially if they start you're still gonna get your son up so hey it's whatever you guys want um, I personally might be changing this to 252 252 um, I'll keep modest because I like how hard it hits but otherwise that's really it um, so yeah, I mean, that's just how I saw it, but we could always work around it. I can always update you guys on what I've done and what what changes I've made to this team. But um, the next change I made is Aerodactyl. Um, it doesn't hit hard at all. It's Rock Slide really isn't the strongest thing in the, th in the world. Um, it does have good attack, but because it's a spread move, it, it's not as strong normally. Um, the Tailwind... I wasn't really seeming to need it. I mean, let's be real. What is what is a Rhydon and Gorgai's really going to be outspeeding that it needs to outspeed? Um, so, that's what I thought. You know, uh, Tailwind's decently okay, but you're not going to really be outspeeding things that you need to outspeed, in my opinion. Um, so the Tailwind wasn't that great. Wide Guard, short of, you know, s 
surviving an extra turn there wasn't really much that you needed it for i never really used it um yeah it protects you against the rock slide that one turn or yeah it's pretty much infinitely usable but that's just how i came across i i never used them uh aerodactyl dactyls are great pokemon and I think there's a lot of potential in Mega Aerodactyl Skydrop. Like, sit on that for a second. That sounds like a really good move. But on this team, I, I wasn't seeing much. Short of Discharge, there wasn't really anything that this team was really scared of. Even Discharge, you're not scared of at all. Um, it was originally because Aerodactyl, uh, Salamence, and Charizard are pretty much don't really like that electric type attacks. Um, I mean, I think I think Salamence is neutral to it, but you guys know what I'm trying to say. Um, if you have the sun up, you're not too scared about Surf or Muddy Water. Um, I, I don't even know. Short of Rock Slide, there's, there's really nothing that you're really scared of. Um, so I took him out, and I put in Venusaur. Uh, this is pretty. This is the exact set that... Um, Eggy Emporium has, I don't know his real name, I just, I just, I've stumbled upon, I'm new to all this stuff, but, um, it just, the Colba Berry lets you survive the Brave Birds, um, and lets you basically last another turn, um, it's pr proven pretty clutch and pretty useful, uh, the Protect is great for scouting out moves and on the first turn getting through the slow stage and then being able to boost up. Um, the Modest is good for hitting really hard. Um, Leaf Storm is a great move. It You do lose out on Special Attack. You can use Giga Drain. Um, that is a decently good option. But otherwise, it's either Leaf Storm or Giga Drain. And then Sludge Bomb. So, uh, there's not much to talk about this. I'm sure most of you know this Venusaur set. Um, Sleep Powder is great because now I have a status on this team outside of Gorgeist Swill O Wisp. And it's a fast status, so that is cool. So the final change I made was I took out Salamence and I put in Gardevoir. The first reason I took out Salamence was because I don't like Salamence. Um, it's just one of those Pokemon that I really don't like. I liked it in Gen 3 when it first came out because it was like that cool guy that you had to go searching for. It was in like this one portion of a cave and it was just like really like rewarding to get. But... I, I personally don't like it anymore, and it's sole, it, well, not it's sole, it, well, you know, I think I can say it's sole reason for being here was to handle Garchomp. It really doesn't handle Garchomp as well as you would think, because it's weak to Garchomp's stabs, you know? I mean, Dragon Claw's pretty much gonna take you out. You may be faster than it, but if you're if your Draco Meteor misses, you're done. You're dead. You're gone. Uh, you can't switch it in on a Garchomp, so that basically means that you have to sack something in order to bring it into the KO Garchomp. So I looked at a couple of things. I looked at um, what did I look look at? Oh man, I can't even remember. Uh, I looked at not Steel types. I looked at. Ice types, and I looked at fairy types. Uh, originally, I was going to go with Frostlass, but I didn't really think Frostlass was doing much for this team. Uh, it did give me a hail help, but um, again, not really doing much for the team that I needed. Um, and then I went to fairy, and I found Gardevoir. Now, Gardevoir is immune to Garchomp stabs, so it can come in, it can eat those up all day, and one hit KO with Moonblast, I think. I'm um, 90% sure it does. Um, so that's like pretty awesome that it can do that, and that's really important that it can do that. Um, second thing is, while we lose Intimidate, we get my personal favorite, Trace. Uh, what this does is, Intimidate is that first turn you're in, Minus attack, done. Trace is a lot more complicated than that. You can bring it in, and while it is random, it will randomly pick between the two of your opponents. Um, you could come in on a potential immunity. So you can switch in on a motor drive, lightning rod, volt absorb, 
any of the sort. Uh, or levitate. I mean, you can really come in on anything and get it gives you an offensive presence. Um, I've switched in and I've traced chlorophyll before in the sun. Choice scarf chlorophyll Gardevoir is not going to be outsped by anything because that's pretty much times two speed and yeah, nothing's really outspeeding you. Um, and then you get like the defensive things where you come in and you get intimidate or other things that I can't think of right now, but you understand what I'm trying to say. It really does help you in the long run to have trace over intimidate. Uh, it gives you a bit, a bit more of a switch initi initiative and things like that. So the one important thing about this, which I realize at this point might be actually wrong information, but you want the timid 252 plus, uh, well, yeah, it's timid, <laughs> the timid 252 speed. What this does is it allows you to outspeed Mega Gengar. The reason being that you need to outspeed Mega Gengar is because both of you two hit KO, KO each other. So Gengar's Shadow Ball will two hit KO Gardevoir, and Gardevoir's Psychic will two hit KO Gengar, Mega Gengar. Remember that. Now, the reason why I started that and prefaced it by saying I might be wrong is I completely forgot about Sludge Wave and Sludge Bomb. I'm 90% sure that both of them are stronger choices than Shadow Ball, so there is a good chance that those will one hit KO you, but you have to also realize that you are faster and that you could. So here's a, here's a solution. If the if the um, Sludge Wave and Shadow Bomb do KO you, one hit KO you, then you can start taking out of your speed. Uh, you won't need to outspeed Mega Gengar anymore because you're going to die to it anyway, no matter what. So you can start taking out of speed and start putting it into either HP or special defense. And you know what? By doing that, you might actually be able to survive Mega Gengar. Mega Kangar, Kangar, the combination of Gengar and Kangaskhan. Can you can you imagine how like dangerous that thing would be? Ooh, gotta ban that real quick. Um, but <laughs> but um, so you can make yourself bulky, and maybe there's a specific EV spread in there that will let you survive that sludge wave and one hit KO back. I mean, you can't one hit KO back. I mean, you probably have to be modest for that. Um, I will, you know what, I will run the calculations, I will figure it out. Uh, you definitely want to be faster than Garchomp, um, that's for sure, because it's Earthquake is going to annihilate you, you have no defenses, good luck trying to survive that. But you do want to hit KO back with Moonblast, so that's important. So, two important Pokemon to outspeed are Mega Gengar and Garchomp. If you can outspeed G Garchomp at least, then you're golden. Uh, you don't have to worry about Salamence because what are they going to do to you? You know, Hydro Pump and Fire Blast aren't Stab. Its Stab aren't going to do very much to you. In fact, it's it, you're immune to one of its Stabs. So this is why I chose Guard of War over Salamence. It's, in my opinion, from the way I look at it, a much better choice. Um, I will get back to you guys. Uh, I might post a quick update. I might talk about it in one of my videos. But um, I will get back to you guys on maybe a perhaps more defensive guard of war uh if it is true that sludge wave does one hit ko you then you do need to outspeed garchomp and you still need to be able to survive that sludge wave that's important i mean it's got the special defense there's got to be something we can do with that so that's all i have for you today uh, I know it's a little weird, you know, me talking about someone else's team. If you really want to know more about his team, please look at it in the description. Uh, it's very well written. It explains why he did things. And I just kind of took his team and decided to make my own changes to it to fit my personal style. And this is what I came up with. Uh, it's not all that drastically different. It's still four of the same guys. And the same concepts still apply. So... Yeah, I mean, this is this is what you what you do. You take people's teams, you play with them, you learn it, you make them your own, and then you have a brand new team. So, I mean, this isn't completely brand new, but it's a uh, store bought used, so it's good. It's just not fresh out of the package, you know. 
But uh, so this is the team. Please check out Nugget Bridge. They're great. They're fantastic. Their forums are great. They know what they're doing. Um, they've been at VGC a lot longer than I have. Uh, this is probably like my second or third month doing VGC. Not even. I'm a, I'm a noob. I'm a newborn child. Um, and that's what I got for you guys. So I appreciate you watching. Please leave a like, a comment, a sub if you love what you're doing. If you don't love it, hey, at least you'll like it, right? Right? <laughs> But uh, have a great day, and I hope to see you guys at the next video. See ya.